fiancé and his best friend slash bandmate sang lyrics about me, which made me uncomfortable with our relationship. I've been with my fiancé Joe for a couple of years now. We have a great relationship, he's funny and talented, and we have a lot of fun together. But there's always been one big issue, Natalie. Joe and Nat are really, really close friends. It borders on unhealthy codependency for sure. When we met, they were living together too. But she was out of the country, so I didn't meet her until we'd been together a couple months. They also work together, artists slash musicians. When we started dating, Joe gave me a disclaimer about them and their close relationship, but I didn't really know what I was getting into. Once I met her, I understood it. She's the prettiest person I've ever seen in my life. I heard a lot about her, but no one told me she looked like a supermodel. It was jarring, too, because Joe is just average. They started writing music again together and performing, which meant a lot of time alone. I also was under the impression that their band involved multiple people, but it's just the two of them. Natalie always invited me for practice and whatnot, but to be honest, being around them made me feel like a third wheel. Then I saw them perform, and for some reason they decided to cover this song, which felt like a slap in the face to me, especially given the context of the movie. It's not even their genre. And I was extra upset because there's that line, you can always come in my back door, and we have issues because I don't like anal. And she even bent over and gave a little wink. And it made me so effing mad. Joe laughed it off and said the song was funny and gets a good crowd response. And also, they're affectionate. I mean, they're not kissing each other, but always close. Well, anyway, she ended up traveling a lot for a long period of time for some good career opportunity. I had to talk Joe out of joining her, and things got a lot better with us. We even got engaged, and it was great. Then, for Christmas, we went to his home country, so I could meet his family, and things went sideways. First off, Nat was in every family photo. Going back years? Then his mom was asking about Nat, and later saying she was going to be out to visit next week. Joe had a bit too much to drink at this point, and got emotional about that saying he wished he would have known because he would have changed our plans. I pulled him aside and told him I wasn't comfortable with how intertwined she was with his family, especially if we were going to get married. I asked if something could be done about that, and he laughed in my face and told me that I could be the one to try to bring that up with his mom. So, I did and his mom looked at me like I slapped her, and then the whole family got upset. Joe got really mad at me, and we left. Apparently, she was a foreign exchange student, and they were immediately best friends. They were weird kids, and didn't have other friends before each other. Every year, they alternated staying with their families, between Ireland and Germany. I never knew about this, but there were things, like we were watching a movie once, and a character was speaking German, and Joe was able to translate. When I asked him WTF he speaks German, he gave me a weird look and was like, yeah, that's where Nat is from. Then when they were teenagers and the two were in Ireland, Nat's family was killed back in her country, and so she stayed there with his family until they moved out together. And they've basically been side by side for over 15 years. They lived together and went to school together, and then lived together and worked together since they were 12. Apparently, there was one school year their parents decided not to put them together, and they both reacted so hostile and began acting out with crime and drugs that their parents gave in. I don't know why I didn't know this and started to wonder what else. Asked if they slept together, and yes, they sure did. About six years ago for like a year. Then one night, Nat kissed a guy and Joe beat the crap out of him. They got in fight and decided sex was complicating things and then just stopped? But then they also hooked up a few times since. I freaked out. After all the she's like my sister bullshit. Joe insisted it didn't mean anything but double UTF. He kept saying it was purely physical and there were no feelings. But if there weren't feelings, how did things get complicated then? Well, regardless, we managed to talk it out, but didn't go back to his parents. He argued that they were barely even friends anymore, since he hasn't seen her in so long and I did such a good job tearing them apart. I told him he asked me to marry him, and should act like it. We fought for like three days until he got sick of it. Last week he gets a call from her. I hear him get upset and argue. Then he starts to leave. I ask him why. 
He just said Natalie's in trouble and he need to go to her and leaves. Just hopped on a plane and left. Just like that. If I wouldn't have asked, he probably wouldn't have even said a word to me. So naturally I was pissed. And I started drinking and sent some angry messages. And I basically told him that if he was going to leave like that and run to her, he made it clear he was choosing her over me, and he shouldn't bother coming home. His response was just okay, and that he would come back soon to get his stuff, which really, really pissed me off. Well, yesterday I talked to our mutual friend Chloe, who told me that Natalie was in a bad situation, and called Joe from the hospital. I felt kind of bad then, and wondered why Joe didn't tell me that detail, so I called him. It wasn't a good conversation. I told him I understood why he left. But since she's okay now, he should come home. He disagreed, and flipped out on me. Said that if I didn't keep them apart and put distance between them. She might have opened up to him about the crap she was dealing with, and he could have helped. He called me manipulative and jealous. I do feel bad, but I still think I didn't do anything that bad. Chloe told me she'd be surprised if Joe wants to work things out. I love him. But this situation is so weird, I just want some advice. Is our relationship salvageable? Is what I did that bad? Should we even bother, or should I just let him and Natalie do their weird, not-a-real-couple bullshit? I just found out she tried to be with him, and he rejected her. He didn't want to ruin their friendship. I'm so confused. Update. Hi, everyone. It's me, the one from yesterday's post about my now ex fiance I just want to first say that I really, really appreciate everyone's input and suggestions. It helped me so much and gave me that push to finally address what I already knew what needed to be done. First off, I was angry and emotional yesterday, and I reached out to Sam, who used to date Natalie. I figured if anyone could relate to exactly what I was dealing with, it would be him. So we met up for some drinks. I'm not looking for a rebound type anything. Just wanted someone who really understands. Apparently, he asked way more questions, and Natalie was way more open with him than Joe was with me. And it filled in some blanks, but also made things more confusing. Sam read the whole post in comments. Then we started talking. First thing he clarified was the time they were sleeping together. So, per Sam, they were hooking up secretly for that year. And from what Natalie told Sam, God, this is tiring. It started as a way to relieve tension slash boredom. The first time happened during a fight, which is so on brand for them that if I wasn't so angry, I'd laugh at that. They agreed to keep emotions out of it and just have fun. Apparently, Natalie said the sex was incredible because they're so close already, which is why they didn't just write it off as a one-time mistake. And then the reason the fight that ended things happened is Natalie was going to bring this. Other guy as her date with her to the party and she made a joke like, unless you want to finally make this official LOL. And Joe's response was like, no, I can't ruin our friendship like that. So Natalie went and brought that guy with her, and then Joe got drunk and tried to kill him. So, yeah. I don't know why Joe chose to leave out the details that he did. It probably would have made me feel a little more comfortable. So he left out those details. But Natalie told Sam those details and admitted to Sam when they broke up that no one will ever mean more to her than Joe. I applaud Sam for not blowing that up and letting everyone know I'm not that nice. You guys will be proud of me. After a few drinks with Sam, I took the advice that a lot of people gave me. But instead of just sending my last post to Joe, I sent it to our entire group chat that all of our friends are on, including Joe and Natalie. And then I waited. Most people didn't respond in the chat, but I started getting a lot of private texts from friends. But after a little while, Natalie responded, and I'll just copy her response here. Emma, I was going to talk to you privately, but since you decided doing things this way, I will follow suit. Joe is just average. This is how you talk about a man you are supposed to love, especially considering he is not just average. I had to talk Joe out of joining her, and it meant he missed out on a great opportunity just to appease you and your concerns. I even tried to invite you to come with us on the tour. You also mention him getting a real job and are rude about his talent. You have never supported him. You came to one of our performances the whole time and hated that song, and we stopped playing it, even though you never came to another one. 
I am sorry you didn't know the details of our friendship. I have tried to include you and befriend you, and build a relationship with you, but you were too jealous to accept my effort. But maybe we could have talked about things and made you feel comfortable. You didn't even like to hear him talk about me. You also made the implication I did something drastic to get his attention to, make him come out here, and that is cruel considering circumstances. I wish I would have been around more, so I would have realized sooner that he deserved so much better than you. I was honestly shocked to get that response, and I was wondering why the hell she didn't address the important stuff, like being in love or the fact they've had sex. But anyway, chaos kind of broke out in the chat after that, and I didn't respond with anything. Just sat back and watched it all blow up. Well, Joe called me a little while after that and assured me he was alone. He was crying and apologizing to me, but not like begging for me back at all. He basically confirmed what I thought and everyone else was saying. He was apologizing for hurting me and straight up admitted he's totally in love with her and has been forever. They were even each other's first kiss. I told him I know she wanted a relationship with him, Sam told me. So what was he doing with me? He said he didn't realize the extent of her feelings for him, thought it was just because the sex was good. He didn't want to admit he was madly in love with her and basically he was worried that if they tried a relationship and things ended badly because she realized she could do better, their friendship would be ruined. He said their friendship was important enough to him that he'd prefer being quietly in love with her forever to trying something and ruining it. And that's kind of where I came in, I guess. He says he was in major denial about his feelings for her, and he hoped it would be easier to have her as just a friend if he tried to put his energy into a different relationship. I cried and yelled a lot and called him a lot of names. I'm still shaking. He admitted it was a horrible thing to do to me and says he never wanted to hurt me. Basically, he's insecure, and it caused this whole storm. Obviously, things are completely done. From what it sounds like, with Joe saying he didn't realize the extent of her feelings, it sure sounds like he does now. So maybe seeing this post made her fess up. Good for them, I guess. I hate both of them, and I hope they make each other insane. I've thrown out a lot of his crap. And instead of giving the ring back, I'm gonna go sell it and do something fun. A lot of people are calling them cheaters, but I would like to clear up that I'm 99% sure neither of them cheated on anyone, aside from their constant emotional affair. Some of my wording might be confusing, and I apologize. I've calmed down a bit, and I'm pretty worried about Natalie. I feel like they're going to be together and he's going to be all crazy and controlling, and things are going to get really messy. The emotions with these two are way too dramatic. She's so love-struck and blinded by his admission of his feelings that she's going to defend him to the end, poor girl. Update. I'm not sure what I'm posting for now. I'm a little drunk and really sad and angry. Most of my friend group were friends with them first, and after the initial drama, most of those friends have already switched to thinking it's about time they're finally together. My family isn't too supportive, not in a bad way. That's just the nature of my family. We get uncomfortable talking about emotional things, which is probably why I willfully ignored the issues with my fiancé. I'm at a loss. He hasn't even picked up his stuff yet. I've been drinking and crying and obsessing over every detail of this whole messed up situation. I feel like an idiot. Why did I stay for so long when he always put her before me? Why didn't I see what everyone else apparently did? He was just with me because he thought it would help him move past his feelings for her. I feel so used and unloved. I do have plans to get into therapy, for multiple reasons. What do I do? I know it's only been a few days, but when does this start to not hurt so badly? I loved him so much. Even when he flew out to her and abandoned me because she needed him, when I got upset and we fought, I still thought, how do I fix this? I'd be lying if I said I hadn't considered calling him. But it wouldn't do any good. Now that he has her, he'll never let her go. Not even that I want him back. I just don't know. I've never gone through this. There's an actual aching in my chest, and I know the drinking is bad. I just... Ah, uh, I don't know. I'm so hurt. Final update. I kind of spiraled after everything that happened and did some stupid things. But I moved back home and started working on myself, and I'm doing a lot better. 
I realized I should avoid relationships for a while, probably and that's been good for me to focus on myself. Realized a lot of things about my identity and sexuality and what I want in life. I realized I had to be kinda screwed up to put up with everything I went through. I'm planning on maybe going back to school this year to finish my degree. I asked some old mutual friends, since they're not on any social media. Joe and Natalie are good, apparently. They got married and moved back to Ireland, and Natalie has a nice fancy job now at Joe's family's company. And he's teaching horse riding or archery or something. And they bought a house. So he's still slacking and relying on her success. Just like when he coasted off her skills in music, and for some reason, she's okay with it. One of our friends made a joke about him being a trophy husband, which is laughable when she should be the trophy, but whatever. That's life, I guess. Sometimes shippy people get happy endings. Natalie's response. This is Natalie. My friend sent me a link to this post, and I made an account just to feed the trolls and help boredom. I'm not going to share all the details of my life with the world here. She's done a good job already with that. But reading this all over again has me fired up. You have a very unreliable narrator on your hands, and I don't feel the need to justify every little comment that's been made, as people will likely make assumptions about my bias as well. Joe isn't slacking and coasting off my success and never did. I'm not sure why she keeps saying that. He put in as much effort and talent into our music as I did, not to mention being my inspiration and constant support. We still do music for fun. It's not like he forced me into some Nepo baby office job. I have explored my hobbies. I have found what I'm good at and what I like. I really enjoy my job at the company, and it puts my skills to good use. Joe is not slacking. This is the same mentality she used to have. That unless someone is wearing a tie and going to meetings all day, it's not a real job, says the barista. I don't care that she's a barista. Just an ironic note, I love seeing him happy and working outdoors like he always wanted. I love being a boss bitch. There's lots of confusion about my childhood. My parents died in an accident when I was 17, nearly 18. Yes, I have other family. I'm not as close to them. I chose to stay with my true support system after that, and they have always been there for me. I made attempts throughout the relationship to be friends with her. I tried to reach out after everything, even after the group chat, the posts, etc., to see how she was doing, and if she wanted to talk, and I'd answer anything he agreed to do. And she basically screamed threats at me, so I decided. Never mind. We're child-free. Lots of weird comments wishing regret and misery and three kids on me and heaps of drama. I'm not a dramatic person. That's why I didn't run to defend myself previously. Or stir things up by sharing all the things she has said and done. All I wanted is what I have now, living near my, Joe's, family again, with happy pets and a happy husband. Frankly, it's no one's business, but reading some comments here made me defensive about the man I love. Our wedding was perfect. It wasn't really eloping, like she says. We went home and had a quiet wedding, with about 20 people near a lake in Ireland. We spent time at together as kids. It was perfect and beautiful and everything I wanted. 